comme ça. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are there, I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome you to a glorious night tonight. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, great, marvelous things the Lord did. Tonight, it's like we're just coming now. Great manifestation. Great power. Glorious visitation. I can't even hear the amen of the people in front of me. Something glorious is coming your way. Mighty power manifested in your life tonight. You know, everything was dark. And then we plugged in into that little socket and see everywhere became bright. And as you plug in tonight, as you connect with Christ tonight, everywhere in your life, in your family, in your community, the light of heaven will shine. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise and glorify your name. How mighty you are. Unchanging, unchangeable. What you have done in decades gone by, generations gone by, years gone by, you are going to repeat everything in every life here tonight in Jesus' name. A repetition of your glorious power, of your glorious manifestation, of your glorious visitation in every life tonight, every heart tonight, every one tonight, here at the Alpha location and all over the world. Manifest yourself and visit everyone in Jesus' name. I will go back home with great blessings tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, you know, I was telling our pastor here that I love the Ghanaian language. Now, since I don't understand, the only one I understand is hallelujah, amen. Can you shout amen? God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight again, we come because of the glorious visitation of the Lord. The visitation of the Lord is like diamond that has many sides. You have this side, this side, this side. And that's why we continue. We're looking at the sides of the manifestations of the glorious visitation of the Lord. And tonight, as the Lord reveals himself afresh, and he shows us what will happen when he visits us gloriously, you will not be left out. Blessings in your life, salvation in your life, restoration in your life, miracle in your life, deliverance in your life, and the great reconciliation with the Almighty God coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. We had expectations before we came that if the Lord can touch me, if I can touch the Lord, the expectation that he touches me and I touch him, that expectation you have in your heart, beyond even that, the Lord will do tonight for you. I'm looking at Psalm 62 verse 5. 
It says, my soul which thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. My expectation is from him. No disappointment. No delay. No failure. My expectation is from him. He tells us in verse 6. It says, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, In God is my salvation. In God is my glory. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. And then it says in verse 8, Trust in him at all times. Seek at all times. Sinful at all times. Defeated at all times. Oppressed at all times. And so poor, you could not have the sufficiency in your life at all times. You trust in him. You see, and you want salvation, you trust in him. In the dungeon, in darkness, in the prison, and you want to be lifted up and taken up, you trust in him at all times. The sickness is so terrible and no one can help you. You've gone here, you've gone there, you've gone everywhere, trusting him at all times. You have such a burden and such a heavy load, you cannot even describe and you cannot bring to the Lord. It says, that's not, don't go away from the Lord because of the burden. Trust in him at all times. So much disappointment in life. All those expectations were had. Years gone by. Decades gone by. Years have come and gone. Decades have come and gone. And the expectations are not fulfilled. It looks like the expectation is being cut off. You go that way, no way. You go that way, no way. Here is the time for the expectation to be fulfilled. Only trust in him at all times. Tonight you are wondering what will happen. Something good will happen. Because you trust in him at all times. Trust him, not trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Look at verse 11 there. It says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. The power belongeth unto God. When God speaks once, that's enough. Let there be light once, that's enough. Let the ocean, the seas come up once, that's enough. When he speaks a word, a word of salvation, the word of deliverance, the word of power, when he speaks each once, that's enough. But look at this, God has spoken once and twice have I had this, the power belongeth unto God. The power to set you free belongs to God. The power to forgive, it belongs to God. 
the power to create and recreate your life it belongs to god he said it once then he said it twice repetition is for emphasis that you will know that whatever god says he says on his throne in heaven he says with a creative power he says with his irresistible power god has spoken once and twice have i had this that power belongeth 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 all the time continually belongeth unto god And then in verse 12, it says, Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. God is always full of mercy. In the past, at the present, in the future, the mercy of God is always full. And tonight, the Lord is full of mercy towards you. Mercy. When do we need mercy? When we've gone so far from uh, the benefactor that we married nothing. He is our benefactor. He is our redeemer. He is our recreator. And we've gone so far, we're even ashamed of ourselves. Talk of marriage, we do not merit anything. And that is when the mercy of God comes in. Lord, thou, thou hast mercy to you, belongeth mercy. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. Tonight, we're talking about our fulfilled expectations by his glorious visitation. Our fulfilled expectations by his glorious visitation. What's your expectation? I expect mercy. It will come. I expect salvation. It will come. I expect restoration. It will come. I expect miracle. It will come. Say amen. I fulfilled expectations in the plural by his glorious visitation. There are three things we're looking at very briefly. Number one, the fulfilled promise of the Father's visitation. We've been far away from him. But he's always near. But in our thoughts, in our mind, in our action, in our behavior, we've been far away from the Father. But he's always near. Because he's an omnipresent God. He's there with you. He's here with me. And he's watching you. And when you say, Lord, fulfill your promise, I come. You'll, you'll know how near, how close, how present a father is. The fulfilled promise of the father's visitation. Number two is the full privilege of our friend's visitation. Friend, capital F. Abraham had one friend. God Almighty. And God Almighty was the friend of Abraham. Abraham was the friend of God. And the privilege Abraham had, the fullness of the privilege Abraham had, 
because of the friend, almighty friend, powerful friend, miracle working friend, creator friend. Number three is the fathomless power at his faith focused visitation. Fathomless. So deep you cannot come to the bottom. So wide you cannot come around it. So high you cannot get to the peak. Fathomless. Limitless. Unlimited in our lives. The power that comes to work in our lives. It works within us. It works around us. It works on everything that concerns us. The fathomless power at his faith focused visitation. You know, it focuses on faith. I close my eyes and I cannot see the air, the wind blowing. But I feel the breeze. That's faith. Even though you cannot see, even though you cannot physically touch, it's based on faith. The creator is in his creation every time, everywhere. And because of that faith we have, and the faithfulness he has, and the focus is on his faithfulness and our faith in him, there will be power manifestation in our lives tonight. I said, there will be power manifestation in your life tonight. Look at those things one by one. We're looking at number one. The fulfilled promise of our father's visitation. In Exodus chapter 3, reading from verse 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. In uh, one of the part, in one part of our African continent, the people there say when somebody is laughing, is weeping also on the inside. Smiles cover, laughter covers the sorrow, the suffering, the pain men women have on the inside but god sees the affliction he sees the sorrow he sees the heartache he sees the pain that our left hand smile try to cover up the pain of failure the pain of dissatisfaction. The pain of sorrow and sin and suffering. The pain of going to places we regretted at last. The pain of the regret and the remorse of our lives. He sees our pain. The pain of ad I known. He sees it all. It's private, it's personal, it's painful. He sees it all. You, you can tell the children of Israel when he eventually came out, they say, Well, remember the cucumbers and the onion and the pomegranate and everything that we ate in Egypt. Ah, they were covering up something. I see your affliction, I see your sorrow.
The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and I've heard their cry. No, we don't cry in the open. We look tough. We look hard. We look like we don't care what is happening. That's why we smile. We don't cry. We all stand firm. And we look straight at the person in front of us. I just say, I wish I could be as bold as that man, as that woman. But we cry. If a little child whips you, you'll not cry. If Satan, the great enemy, the mighty, powerful, demonic, occultic enemy, when he whips you in the day, in the night, I'm sure you'll cry. And the Lord said, I have seen the affliction and the cry. By reason of their tax masters, for I know their sorrows. Thank God he knows. I said, thank God he knows. And he's going to bring relief. He's going to bring recovery. He's going to bring a restoration. He's going to bring total freedom for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And then he says in verse 8, in verse 8, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now the Egyptians tormented the Israelites when they were, were there, when they were under them, when they were in their dungeons in different, different ways. And those Egyptians, it wasn't just them. It was the one that lived inside of them that said the generations and the progeny and the children of Abraham will not have the privilege, the power, the provision, the promised land. He has promised them. That's why those evil spirits, evil powers, demons inhabited all those tormentors. And I tell you, they tormented them. And then the Lord says, I come to bring them out, out of the land to a good and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hevites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. He has come. He has come to bring us out. I didn't hear you. Amen. Amen. Out of the dungeon, he has come to bring us out. Amen. Out of darkness, he has come to bring us out. Amen. Out of the condemnation and damnation of the devil, of the enemy, the Lord has come to bring us out. Amen. Out of the secret crying. Out of the secret sorrow. Out of the thing that only each of us knows what we are going through tonight. He has come to bring you out. The time has come. The demons that choose to just touch you and grab you and squeeze you and uh, handle your life like a real flower that you know you pluck out and you, you make useless. The time has come, they will stretch out that hand, they will not be able to touch you. You'll be so far away in Christ, in God, that the hand of the devil will be so short, he can touch other people, he'll never reach you. Because God has come to give you a glorious, victorious visitation. 
it happen to them. It will happen to you. How did it happen to them? Exodus chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 13. Exodus 12, verse 13. And the blow shall be to you for a token, for a sign upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That was the blood of an animal at that time. All those lambs that they slaughtered referred to the Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was to come and take away all our sin and all the consequences of sin. And and the next day, John seeth Jesus coming, and he says, Behold, look at him, gaze at him, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin, the suffering, the sorrow of the world. All the people, no exception. The man, the woman, the boy, the girl. All the members of every family. They applied the blood on the lintels of their houses. And the angel of death could recognize the houses where the blood of the lamb had been put. And the angel that came from heaven to touch all those houses without the mark of the blood. is so respected, recognized the blood because it's pointing to the blood of Jesus that will come. They never could get in to those houses to hurt anyone there. And when you recognize the blood of Jesus, when you recognize the power in the blood of Jesus, when you recognize the salvation in the blood of Jesus, I say, yes, Lord, I believe the Lamb of God has died for me. No matter what evil you had done before, that connection with the Lord Satan, demons, evil will never be able to touch you again. But the Lord told them something. He said, as you apply the blood, stay inside the house where the blood had been applied. Don't come out. I want to go for pleasure. Don't come out. I want to go for nightclub. Don't come out. I want to go and visit my Egyptian friend. Don't come out. You remain under the covering and the cover of the blood of the Lamb. And even though you are shivering, even though you are trembling, whatever physical agitation you have, just stay inside and then the blood is there. You are secured in Jesus' name. And so, as we believe in the Lord tonight, and you come out of that Egyptian darkness, your life will have a new turning around for the better. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. 
neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. You know, there are people who are very religious. And what they ought to know, they don't know. What do they know? I know Psalm 23. I know Psalm 27. I know Psalm 91. When anything is going to happen, if I put my Bible and open to the Psalms under my pillow, finish. That's all they know. They say when I go to wash in the river, they say when I drink that holy water, they say all oh, the evil they will scatter here and there. That's all they know. They don't know this one that we're reading now. They think if I just go to church on Christmas Day, Easter time, I'm a Christian now, am I not? They know religion. They know rituals. They know celebrations. You need to know something more before you get to the kingdom of God. Before you come out of Egypt and get to the promised land and get to the kingdom and get to heaven, you need to know something. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? You ought to know that. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, old, young, neither fornicators, occasional, habitual, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor the effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind and then in verse 10 no thieves no covetous no drunkards no revilers no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He says we ought to know that. If you didn't know that before, now you know. That the word of God cannot be belittled and trampled over. And then you trample over the word of God and get to heaven. It will not happen. He says, well, you know, coming out of Egypt, coming out of darkness, coming out of evil, coming out of the bad or culty kingdoms of this world and getting to the kingdom of God, here is what we ought to know. If you cannot get to the kingdom of God with all these baggages, then you drop them at the foot of the cross. You repent, you turn away from them. You believe in God that cleanses us and forgives us and he changes our lives and now you're on your way to the kingdom of God. God. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, but such were some of you. Such were some of you. You were like that. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then you turn around. You say, Lord, I want the kingdom. I want to enter into the kingdom. And I know, now I know, that all these things will hinder me, prevent me, bar me from the kingdom of God. And I so repent and say, Lord, I surrender. It's not you I love. 
I don't love fornication, adultery anymore. I love my Lord now. Beyond all those characteristics, you are the one I now love with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. All those things get out of my life. That's why he says, but he are washed. But he are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. It will happen to you tonight. You'll forsake all those works of the devil. All those activities of darkness. Seriously and wholeheartedly in your heart. And then you come before the Lord, believing that He and He alone can set you free, can forgive you, can make you whole again. And His salvation and freedom will come unto you. And the promise of God that says, and everyone that shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There will be a fulfillment of the promise of the head because of the Father's visitation. We're looking at number two now. Number two is the full privilege of our friend's visitation. Jesus said, I call you not servants anymore, but friends. He was talking to the apostles and disciples of his. He said, you dropped all those nets and you follow after me. You're no more servants. You are friends. You turned away from darkness and you have come to me, the light of the world. I call you no more servants. You are friends. Friends. And as a friend that has power, it will solve all your problems. He came to a particular place, he visited them there. And look at the result of his visitation. John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 3. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And then in verse 4, it says, For an angel went down at a certain season unto the pool, and troubled the water and whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had in verse 5 and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. In verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie down there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? An angel had been coming and visiting them once in a while. And when that angel troubles the water, only one person will be healed. Can you think about the journey of the angel from heaven coming to that place and he troubles the water and only one person will be lucky enough to have healing from whatever plague, whatever suffering, whatever disease he had. Only one person.
And now Jesus came to visit them. And Jesus has come to visit you. And Jesus is so much greater than the angel that had been coming. The angel could not do it directly. It just troubles the water. And the people had to get into the troubled water before anything can be done. But Jesus doesn't need the water to heal you. I didn't hear your amen. amen. The water in the bottle, he doesn't need that to heal you. The water in the river, he doesn't need that to heal you. He himself is the healer. He himself is the deliverer. He himself is the redeemer. He himself is the miracle worker. Uh, look at how he did it. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, the impotent man, the helpless man, the hopeless man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, he's still looking at the water. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. He wants us to remove our eyes from that thing that had not been walking for 38 years. The anointing with oil that had not been walking for 38 years. The sprinkling of the holy water from the bottle that had not worked for 38 years for him. Human beings are so, uh, we're so dumb, we're so foolish, we're so lacking in understanding uh, that all the things that have not worked for you for all these many years, we're so dumb, we, we keep on uh, looking at them. Why don't you look away? Christ has come and Christ without other agency it will touch your life tonight. It will make you whole in Jesus name. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, Jesus saith unto him. He didn't carry him. He didn't touch him. Jesus is different. He didn't go to, okay, if you cannot get to the water, I'll get the water to you. No. Now you have a man, the man of Galilee. He will carry you and throw you into the water when the angel comes. Jesus does not need the coming of the angel before he performs his miracle upon your life. Jesus says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed. And walk. If you are lame there tonight, you are here. That will coming through me from Jesus. That you will arise and you'll take up your wheelchair and your crutches and wave them like this. You'll walk in Jesus' name. Your blind eyes, sir. I've been putting drops, I drop, I drop, I drop. The thing is coming, going from good to worse. It's not going to drop anything you know, on your eye tonight. All it needs to do is to speak the word, open your eyes and see. And you will see that swelling there. Punching it, rubbing it, and pinching it. We don't need that tonight. Just lay your hand there 
and the hand of Jesus will be laid on your hand. Yes, Swelling, go away, lo and behold, it has gone. From your life tonight, it will go in Jesus' name. Jesus says unto him, now the man has got his own miracle, is you are the next, and Jesus says unto you. And Jesus says unto you, that my knock in your head as if they want to break your head or cut it off peace but still or that they will vanish away jesus says unto me say that jesus says unto me rise say it say it rise take up your bed and walk what will happen to you? That miracle will take place in Jesus' name. Hey, look at verse 9. And immediately. And immediately. I wanted you to say that. And immediately. When is your miracle tonight? Immediately. When will your blind eyes open tonight? When will you rise up and walk tonight? When w that will cheer, when are we going to take it away from you and we'll raise it up and then we'll say, Look at your property. Uh, 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 uh. It's no more my property. No more my property. Look at, look at your walking stick. No, no, no. It's no more mine. Christ has taken over my life and he, has, and he has said, rise up and walk. I don't have crutches as my property anymore, wheelchair as my property anymore, and all those things that you know I used to support, and even with their support, I'm still, try, I'm still trying, but I'm falling down. Tonight, he sets you free. And immediately the man was made whole. You understand? Made whole. Everything connected with all the impossibility of his life. Everything taken away. There was no lack. There was no pain. There was no deformity. There was nothing else. The man was made whole. And he took up his bed and walked. When are you going to take up your bed and walk? When are you going to open your eyes and see? When are you going to drop all the pain, all the sickness, all the disease in your life? Now, immediately. I, I don't want to keep you far from the miracle. Let me come to point number three quickly. Number three is the fathomless power at his faith focused visitation. He doesn't ask for money, he asks for faith. He doesn't ask you for what you don't have. He wants to build a mansion. He wants to build a sanctuary. And then he says, if you're going to be healed, bring money. Bring money. I don't bring small. If you want a big miracle, bring much more. Christ does not ask about that. All he's asking for is, do you believe I can do this? All he's asking for is faith. Go and buy something there. Come and give me. When you give me, miracle come. Never. How much money do you have in your account? Go and withdraw. Almost everything, 90% bring. Never. Faith. Somebody help me shout faith. That's all. And you believe in the Lord. Like you believe in the driver that is driving the taxi. You wave him down. 
And then he, you know, points out at you and says, where are you going? He says, I want to go to, you mentioned the place. He says, come in. And you're coming and you're relaxed. And he is doing the driving. When did you take eye test last? You don't ask him that. Your latest uh, driving license, how new, how current is it? You don't ask him that. Do you really, for him, for reality, do you know this place I mentioned? You don't ask him that. Come in, you're coming. You sit down. You are relaxed. And then he gets to the place. Jesus said, come in. Relax. Where are you going? I'm going for healing. You've got it. Sit down there. What do you want? I want victory. You've come to the right place. Sit down there. What do you want? I want freedom from satanic attack. You've come to the right person. Sit down there. And then he tells us his name. Faith in his name. Amen at the mention of his name. We're there. Tonight, you are there. Tonight, I am there. The fathomless power of arch is faith focused visitation. Acts chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 7. Acts chapter 14, verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. There they preached the good news. There they preached Jesus as Savior, as healer, as deliverer, as miracle worker. There they preach the glad tidings. Look at verse 8. And there sat there a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Verse 9. The same heard Paul speak. You're that certain man tonight. That certain woman tonight. That person tonight. You heard the preaching of the world. And who steadfastly beholding him. Perceiving that he had faith to be healed. How did Paul perceive that? Paul was preaching the good news. He was excited about it. And he looked at the man. The man began to smile. Today is my day. The man began to rejoice. He was so excited. He was rubbing his legs, his tight before. He was trying to stretch before. He was squeezing the face before because the pain was excruciating. He looked away from everything. He was looking at Paul intently, excitedly, expectedly. It's like, today is my day. And when Paul looked at him, he could see the expectation coming out of his eyeballs. I see that faith in you tonight. I see that expectation in you tonight. You know in the heart of heart, you know in the deepest place in your life that this Jesus will save me today, will heal me today, will turn my life around today. And he said, steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. 
Look at verse 10. In verse 10, he said with a loud voice. He said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. Didn't touch him. Didn't pour water on him. Didn't rub his face. Didn't shake him. Didn't push him. He stood where he stood. And the lame man who had never walked in his life was where he was. But Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. It's all of faith. It is all of faith. And what's this connection between the hearer and the speaker? The speaker has faith you are going to be healed. You have faith you are going to be healed. The speaker the hearer in agreement together. And if two of you shall agree as touching anything on earth, you ask heaven, heaven will do it for you. And so your time has come. You have faith to be saved. You have faith to be forgiven. You have faith to be set free. Christ has paid the price, the price for you, so that the good news of salvation will be your possession and experience. Today, salvation. Today, forgiveness. Today, redemption. Today, your name will be written in the book of life. Now, when? Now. When will you be saved? When will you be forgiven? And then you'll not go out and still say, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. Uh-uh. Your language must change when God has changed your nature. From tonight, your life will be different. It's about an eyes closed. Your salvation has arrived. Because your Savior has arrived. All those evil things that you didn't know before will prevent you from getting to the kingdom of heaven. Now you know you abandon them. You jettison them. You reject them. You forsake them. And you call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. You want that total freedom, salvation, forgiveness, wherever you are, raise up that hand. This is your time of salvation. Raise it up, raise it up. God bless you, God bless you there, God bless you there. Tonight is your night. If you are raising up your hand, please, you will stand up. If you are raising up your hand, please, you will stand up. For forgiveness stand up right now for your forgiveness for your salvation for your redemption knowing that those sins will drag you to hell and you don't want to go to hell you want to repent you want to abandon the sins and come into the kingdom of God stand up the Lord is waiting for you he wants to see you have that salvation tonight. He wants to see you turn away from that evil thing and come into the righteousness of Christ. Keep on standing. We're going to pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are a great God. You are a gracious God. You love all your creatures. Do they be sinners? You don't want them to perish in sin. You want to save them and forgive them. You want to justify them and transform their lives. 
as they indicate by raising up their hands, by standing up. Oh Lord, I pray that that forgiveness, that salvation will come upon them now in Jesus' name. I pray you separate them from their sin and separate the sin from them. I pray you wash them clean. I pray you transform and change their lives. That your grace so comes into their lives. The evil things they were doing before and the evil things they were saying before and the evil things they were drinking before and the bad things they were smoking before. All that power will be broken out of their lives in Jesus' name. As they believe in the death and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, wash and cleanse them from all their sins. Give them salvation. Give them the joy of salvation. The peace in salvation. And the victory in salvation. On the radio, those who are, those who are listening. On the television, those who are watching online everywhere those who are surrounding their lives to the Lord Jesus now let that salvation in fullness come to them thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name I pray God bless you it is done keep on standing our counselors are there and the counselors will get some details so that we'll see how to help you further to be established, to be steadfast in this great salvation the Lord has given you. We'll call on our overseer to take over now and help us before the time of miracle prayer. You have taken the greatest decision of life. Allow the counselors to get your particulars so they'll be able to assist you and support you to stand in the Lord. Give correct information to them. Don't give a name which People come to you, they will not be able to recognize or see you. When you say you have repented, it means you have come out of lies, you have come out of deceit, and everything is true about your life. We want the counselors to go near them and make sure that you take their particulars as it is on the cars. The name you are called in the house, give it to them. They send a popular thing around your house which they can use to locate you. Tell them. You want the ushers to be very fast. You're serious about what you are doing? It's a very serious thing. For someone's name to be written in the book of life. We should not lose them. Should not, they, they should not be wasted. Let's do everything to assist them and to help them. If you are also watching online and you gave your life to Christ after our pastor's message this evening, there is a link. GCKHQ.org slash connect. 
below your player. Click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. That's the international contact number. And if it is in Ghana here, the Alpha location, Ghana GCK Secretariat, plus 233-55-245-1955. The number again, plus 233-55-245-1955. There will be a special meeting also which we call Lunch Hour with Jesus, for all those who gave their lives to Jesus right from the beginning of this crusade on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all those who are deciding today. Please, you do yourself good if you respond to this cause and you meet the counselors at the pavilion on my left, Tomorrow, by 1.30, you'll be helped. The pastor, the man of God, the governor of GCK has written a special letter for you. He has given some literature that will help you to be able to stand on your feet. So respond. <laughs> Christo, a year, Yawadano, Fiada, Memenda, any and any marine sonor, ever said Bomon Kaye said, Yawa, a shamosun could be a mammo, a year of China, a year, don't crow any fan, a war, yes, a bem Kumusoha, a war, a Yakata Swano, said Bomodi Abra, if you saw you who free moi, why your home? Never bra, not a radin shroud, not a quaso, a sissia mano. Yen timi mwa u ne shemu kina ne china ma erade ni ye mwonso no kwa sa chwa kwa ta son kubi e ma ene e mwa e mwa me biya se ba se won saka e beti ya fwa u ye pa en tiye ni u mwa en dri mo please the counselors you signify if you are true a ye a kwa nche fwa se ba se mwa ya mwa nya mwa sani e u se mwa ywe Another announcement for the Converse Rally. There will be a special online banquet for all those watching online all over the globe who gave their lives to Christ throughout this program. There will be a pro special program for you 30th April 2023. So more details about this will be sent to you. The pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. May I hear from the counselors if you are true? Please, after the prayer of the man of God, we don't want people to be moving out of the grounds. Stay to listen to testimony. It will do you good. Please. Are you true? Okay. Sir, so, they are true, sir. Yes, sorry, I am so bright. Now, you have a papa, Cecil, 
of a vampire, Gideon Pire. Says your home and then you pray. And you pray, hey, when you pray. Set your eyes on Christ. Set your eyes on Christ. Believe the prayer that is about to come. Amen. I said the amen for you already. We shout before the Jericho walls fall. We believe in our hearts that once we mention the name of Jesus, your healing has arrived. And when Paul looked at the man, and the man was full of expectation, and he knew that he had faith to be healed. He said, stand upright on thy feet. And he lived and walked. That's you now. Those blind eyes will open. Limb legs will find strength. Every pain will vanish away. I rejoice with you. It is done. Raise up your hand. Lay the other hand where you have the problem, the challenge. Deaf, dumb, you are healed. Lame, paralyzed, you are healed. Blind, you are healed. Incurable disease, you are healed. One hand up, the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name, we know this is the moment of the manifestation of your power in every life. And therefore, Lord, I pray, touch everyone miraculously in Jesus' name. Those who have insanity, heal them right now. Goiter, heal them right now. Swelling any part of the body, heal them right now. Tuberculosis, HIV, heal them right now. Cancer, ulcer, heal them right now. Ernia, be healed right now. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. Paralysis, be healed in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, be healed in Jesus' name. The blind, be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever the name of your sickness, infirmity, the Lord touch you right now. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. As you hear this final amen now, the miracle will be your life. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. For him, for her. For the boy, for the girl. For every kind of infirmity, it is done. It is healed in Jesus' name. Miracles everywhere today. Healing everywhere today. Confirmation, manifestation, operation of the Spirit everywhere tonight now in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name I pray. I got it. Say, I got it. Say, I receive. Sit in your life and come out to give your testimony.